Hey everyone, welcome back to Tactical Magic. This is Molly Mandelberg, your host, and I am very excited for this episode here today. I want to call this episode, Why Am I So Happy? And I have an amazing guest here with me today. If you are an entrepreneur, if you're thinking about being an entrepreneur, one of the biggest life hacks you can choose is finding and creating and generating joy in your life. Joy is a huge life hack. And I have someone who very much embodies and lives that message. So hang tight with us for just a sec. We'll be right back. It's not just about mastering technology. It's not just about brand or messaging. It's not just about making more money. It's about showing up in a big way so your people can find you. This is about bringing your most wild and authentic self into the hustle and grind. Welcome to Tactical Magic, a business strategies podcast for the warrior goddess entrepreneur. Awesome. So Paula Vale is the owner, founder of Wellness Inspired and Wellness Inspired Publishing. She is the TV radio host of the show Elevating Your Life with Paula Vale, the author of the book Why Am I So Happy, which was awarded the Bronze Medal in Self-Help Books by Global Book Awards. She's also the co-author of the book America's Leading Ladies Who Positively Impact Our World, along with Oprah Winfrey and others, and the book Beyond Wellness, Usui Reiki Training Manual. Hopefully I said that right. She's an inspirational speaker and prior prior restaurant owner, and also a Reiki master teacher. Welcome to the show, Paula. Thank you so much. I'm just honored to join you. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you here. So one of the questions I really like to ask of my guests, because I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there or hoping to be more entrepreneurs out there. How did you find your way into doing the work that you're doing now? Oh, boy, it was, you know, it's just kind of one step after the other. When I went to college, my college degree was in accounting. I had my life all figured out, but I worked in a restaurant and I fell in love with the restaurant business. I fell in love with serving my customers, putting a smile on someone's face. So I ended up managing a restaurant for years and then buying it and being a female entrepreneur, owner of a restaurant. So I was in the restaurant business 27 years. And then after I sold the restaurant, I learned Reiki. I've been doing Reiki 25 years and I learned it to help this precious dog behind me. I had had her her whole life. She was very sick and someone said, you should learn Reiki. So I did. And it helped her so much. I had her two more years. And I fell in love with the modality of Reiki and just have loved doing that. And about nine years ago, I was approached by a radio organization asking if I would like to host a show. And I was like, oh, oh, thousands of people. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Let me think about it. And then they contacted me again, said, Paula, we really want you to host the show. So that's how it began. And I've been doing interviews for nine years now. And my show is called Elevating Your Life. It's positivity, inspiration, information. And it's on radio and television in California, KMET. And I just love it. But it's amazing how we can have our plan, the path we're going to go down, but yet we end up going down a different path. One way more aligned and enlivening yes. and exciting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I love that. Really a great thing. And I've always been passionate about helping small businesses, entrepreneurs, especially female entrepreneurs. We can do it. And it's just something I really love doing and, and supporting. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. I, I feel like one of the reasons I asked that question is because I want everyone out there who's listening to really get that it's not a linear path. There isn't often, most of the time, there isn't a business plan you create before starting to take action and explore a business that gets followed to a T and stays that way indefinitely. And what I love from your story that you shared is I went and I tried this industry and the restaurant industry was beautiful and amazing and I loved it. And I found the closing point where I moved on to something else and that isn't a failure and that isn't a quitting. It doesn't have to be a quitting experience when it's a aligned choice to move in a new direction. And I think that that 
is a really beautiful thing to sort of exemplify for people that you get to walk the path that you are most enthusiastically aligned with. And then that creates something greater in the future, more opportunities, more yes energy. And I know one of the life hacks or one of the power tools that you walk through the world with and that you write about is this idea of being joy and having happiness be sort of a guiding light. Would you tell us a little bit more about how happiness can be such a tool for creating our life? Yeah, it really can. And I love your point about how it can change in our direction. And when I decided to sell the restaurant, it was like, oh, it was a huge decision. But I I lost my brother suddenly. I worked all these hours, all those years. And I said, okay, it's time to maybe go a different direction. And then look at what happens. And with my book, the reason I named it, why am I so happy? I was always asked that by my customers. Your life must be perfect. Why are you so happy? My life was not perfect. I had many challenges and I share some of those in my book, being bullied in school. One year in junior high, I I, I wouldn't even take my coat off and that, and then other challenges, loved ones that pass. But my attitude was these challenges are making me more grateful for the good in my life. And when I lose someone, I as angry as I am, I'm going to be grateful I had them in my life. And it really brought joy to me to share a smile. It always has. Share a kind word. You don't know what someone's going through, what their day is. And being in a crowded room with a smile on your face, it can change the energy in the room. I've always been fascinated by that. And so that's where I got the title of my book. I share different things, but I share the concept of every morning I think of one thing I'm grateful for. And I believe that sets the tone of the day. Mm. It really is what direction we put our thoughts, our words, and it's just been amazing. And since writing the book, it is. it was a couple months ago featured in Times Square. They pick a book for free every month. They pick like five books. Wow. And this month it's being featured at a huge book festival in Toronto. Amazing. And next month, a huge book festival in Frankfurt. Wow. But something I discovered and I've always believed is on this hand, I'm going to have my goals. I'm going to have what I work hard for. And in this hand, it's going to be wide open to things that can manifest that I may not even have dreamed. So keeping that hand open, it can, as you say, we can have a direction we're going, but something else beautiful can open up. And that's amazing. It is just amazing. You know, when when you keep that door open and just yes to positive manifestations and whatever your challenges are, you know, we're not alone. We all have challenges and we can get those through those. We can support each other. And that's been a great thing for me is just loving being a positive energy. It doesn't mean I don't have down days. I do human, but but you know that that's accessible to you. And I think that that's one of the things I kind of get on my soapbox about a lot too, is that joy and gratitude and changing the energy we walk through our lives with is our choice. That it seems like it's not our choice, that we're get, getting dealt a certain hand and we respond or react to that hand that we're dealt any given day or any year of life. And that that just is what is. But anything that arises in our life, like you said, losing a loved one or having things that are challenging show up, we still get to choose how we respond. And I think that being reminded of that when maybe we're in a pattern or we're in a habit of feeling sort of depressed or destitute or like we're just being dealt a crappy hand in the moment. It's so valuable to be reminded that we are the generators of our joy and that we can do things like think of one thing we're grateful for in the morning or see who we can spread love and joy to today intentionally 
that we think, oh, let me contribute to this person who's sitting at the table in my restaurant, or let me contribute to this client who's showing up on the phone to talk to me, or let me contribute to the person in my household who I haven't really appreciated or acknowledged yet today, that we expend that joy or gratitude or appreciation, but it's actually growing it in us as well, which I think that people don't really get that. Like people aren't nice to me or people don't love me or I don't get enough respect or acknowledgement or attention. It's like when you become the generator, the, the one choosing to create more of that in the world, it fills that up in you as well. And that sort of turns the tide on your entire life. And I've struggled with serious chronic depression for most of my adolescence and young adulthood. And that was honestly the thing that started changing it was me realizing I get to choose gratitude today. I get to choose to find the tiny mundane detail to just be in awe of right now, which yes. is, oh. yeah, oh, it's yes. beautiful. I know that you preach about happiness being a choice. Is, yeah. Wise words, because it is, it is a choice. What direction we take our thoughts to. And, you know, when we have those challenges, a lot of times they're out of our control. All we can do is look at them, realize what steps we can take and move on. Really, that's all we can do. Every day is in the moment. And then we step forward. And that is just so true how... We choose our attitude and we choose where our thoughts and our thoughts direct our emotions. And really, it's actually very exciting that we can do that. We can make those choices. Yeah. That gives that power to us, doesn't it, Molly? Yeah, it, it, it is. It's our choice. And, and I mean, in some ways, it's like, damn it, it's up to me. And on the other hand, it's like, wow, it's, it's up to me. I get to create more of that. I actually sort of re-got that epiphany a few days ago. I just came across a note in my phone that said, if you want to experience more love, love them more. If you want to experience gratitude, be grateful now. And I was like, oh, I guess I needed to hear that because I just came across that having written that. Do you have any other tips for ways that people can open up to more of that energy in their lives? I would say give yourself more of what makes you happy. You know, we can be so busy with putting out and doing that we don't give ourselves enough. It can be something as listening to your favorite music and dancing a little bit or making some muffins, working in the yard or being artistic or whatever you enjoy. Give yourself that. Take the time to love yourself and give yourself things that make you happy. And that's just going to raise your vibration and it's going to make an effect on what you are to others as well and how you vibrate and resonate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I absolutely agree with you. And I also want to make the distinction that giving yourself what you enjoy, maybe don't include watching television or using social media as those things. See what else you can find. Yeah. Because yeah. while those can be really quick and easy dopamine hits, they often are in my experience, energetically pulling energy more than they're contributing energy to us. I find that when I'm getting into that overwhelm, scattered, too much to do, can't even begin to imagine how it will all get done, actually stopping all the action. And like you said, going out in the yard or taking the dogs for a longer walk than I think I have time for, or making a piece of art if I haven't made art in a little while, like those things tap you back in in a way that, yeah, the normal operating system of life or the social media feeds that we can get sucked into yes. as entertainment can sometimes not be the same. Not They're not generating as much inspiration and aliveness for us. Oh, that's so true. That's so true. And, yeah. and it can be something as simple as going out and enjoying a sunset. And it's so wonderful that we all have our own unique things about us that we can celebrate. When I was bullied in school, I didn't know why I was bullied. But one day I just said, you know what? Love me or don't. I'm just going to be me. And that set me free. And years later at a high school reunion, I, a gentleman come up to me and said, Paul, I just want to apologize for bullying you in school. And I asked a question, something I always wondered, why? 
why did you? And he said, because you were shy, nice, and it was easy. See, mm -hmm. it had nothing to do with me in particular. It was just, I was an easy personality. But when we can just say, I'm going to be me and celebrate it, it really does set us free. It does. I, my granddaughter said to me last year, Grammy, I have told all my friends that if you hear a song you like, you dance wherever you are. And mm -hmm. it's true. I can be in the grocery store and I'm dancing. And I'm happy to do that. You know, I'll be weird. I'm happy to. I'm unique me. And I think that's something to be really proud of, how unique we each are. And we each have our own beautiful things. And then when we take a step to show kindness to others, we get back much more than what we give. You know, an act of kindness, a kind word, it can make a huge difference in the world for others. Absolutely. I love that you're a writer and more than that, a book writer as well. I'm actually working on my third book, which is going to probably be a series, which is daunting. But I know there's a, what I come across a lot, which is why I have courses that are for people to stay on the horse as far as copywriting goes. Do you have any practices or any tools that you use to stay in the project or to give yourself permission to write in the first place? Oh, yeah, it was in the first place. It was giving myself permission. When I was in high school, I loved my English class and I said to myself, someday I'm going to write a book. But I'd always say, oh, no, I can't do it. I don't think I can do it. And then after I turned 60, I said, I'm going to do it. And what really worked for me was just, I would just randomly think of something or ideas and I'd start making notes. I just make some notes here and there, you know probably just about every day, every other day, but I would think of things and make notes. And then I was able to just put it all together. But because you don't have to have it all come to you at once. You can just work on a page a day. I mean, whatever works for you. And then just be open to, oh, I think I'm going to talk about that. Oh, I got an idea. And so much can come to us when we just open up to it and just take that first step of getting out of the fear. Can I do it? What should I just say? Okay, I'm going to allow it and I'm going to begin. And just taking those first steps, I think is a huge start. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and also knowing, I think that the project is building itself in the background while you're actively not working on it that sometimes it's still writing itself. And then when you sit down to write, it can come out with a little bit more free flow. I think one of the things, my mom is a writer as well. And she says that it doesn't matter if you never write anything in your life, but if you feel bad about not writing, you're a writer. The oh, I love that. People who aren't writers don't have any guilt at all about not writing. It's the people who feel like they should be writing that are eaten up by it. And in my opinion, if you feel bad for not writing, that means you're a writer. And if you're a writer, you may as well write something. Yes, yes. That voice is telling you. <laughs> yeah. 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 And there's a subconscious part of us, I think, that's always working on that next thing. Or once, especially once you've decided that you're bringing a project to life, that you can trust it's being built in the background. And when you sit down to write it, it will come through. But yeah, has that I imagine that gratitude practice has been a key part in you giving yourself that permission to write. Would you say that's true? Yes, yes, it really has. And gratitude has just been a huge part of my life. I, I was born a premature baby, less than three pounds. My parents were told, do not expect her to survive the night. And I'm here. And so I've always felt I'm going to be grateful for my life and appreciate it and try and be a positive energy. But yeah, it's gratitude is huge in my opinion in what it does for us and what it brings to us. Because that energy of gratitude is also a tool of manifestation. Yeah. Will you say more about that? How is gratitude related to manifestation? Oh, just 
gratitude and saying, literally saying yes to positive manifestation in your life. Yes, I allow it. Yes, positive manifestation is mine. I am grateful for what I have. And things can happen. For example, the Times Square picture behind me, mm -hmm. that was an eight-story billboard. Do you know what I paid for that? Zero. Yeah, you said it was free. <laughs> yes. I was featured at a, on the cover of a Women Extinction magazine in New York about two years into interviewing for my show. And from that, they contacted me and they do someone every year they pick. And I got picked. And when they said, I just was grateful. I didn't ask how big, where, anything. My attitude my friends were saying, well, how big is it? Where's it going to be? I don't know. I'm just grateful. And I asked them, send me a picture. That's all. I'd, I'd just love to see a picture when it goes up. And literally when they sent that, I about stopped breathing. But, you know, just, I was just grateful. And I really believe an attitude of gratitude just expands manifestation and beautiful things in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of the antidote to the kinds of thoughts that throw limitations and barriers up to what we want, what we're desiring yes. more of. It's like when yeah. you're gratitude, when you're being the energy of gratitude, you can't be the energy of anxiety as easily. Mm -hmm. You don't have as much access to the energy of stress is yes. because they're kind of <laughs> on the opposite sense, sides of a sort of seesaw experience. And we can choose thoughts, we can choose ideas, we can choose to generate more feelings of gratitude at any moment in our lives, not to not feel the negative stuff when it shows up or the emotions as they arise, but to, you know, find the golden thread in a lesson or find the beauty to acknowledge in anything that's arising is still possible. It's a choice we can make. And I've always believed in the words and how we express our thoughts. Let's say in with manifestation, I want this to happen. I'm hoping this happens. That puts out a chance that it might not happen. That actually puts that out. That's where I say yes to this happening or I see it, you know, it is happening. That's more of a positive comeback in my opinion. Because the I want, I need, I hope puts in that it may not happen. Yeah. And really our thoughts and words, what we put out is what we what we get back. Totally. It's amazing. I love that. So what are the best places for people to go and follow you and find out more? My website is wellnessinspired.com and you can learn more about my books. And they're on Amazon, but you can get the links to my television show, KMET, in California, and my radio show, KMET AM Radio in California. So you can learn a lot on my website, wellnessinspired.com. And I'm also on LinkedIn and Facebook, just Paula Vale. Yeah. Awesome. And that's V-A-I-L. V-A-I-L. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Dale, Colorado. Awesome. You've shared so much wisdom and magic already on the show. Are there any last words of wisdom you want to leave people with? Oh, I just, I'm grateful to be on your show and to connect to all of you out there, the audience, and we are all energy sisters and brothers. I just say, I celebrate you and your uniqueness and celebrate each other and Molly in the moment is where everything happens. You know, we have what we wish we would have done or this and that or what we're wanting, but in the moment is where we take every step. Everything is in small steps and we just move forward. Mm -hmm. So here's to enjoying the moment now and the day now, which, which is a gift to all of us today. Awesome. And I am really grateful to have joined you today. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show, Paula. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you everyone out there for listening. Go check out 
wellnessinspired.com. We'll put the link to that in the show notes. Definitely go check out Paula's show as well, Elevating Your Life with Paula Vale. And whatever happens, keep asking big questions and taking bold action because you are here for a reason. We'll see you next time. 